I have this postcard here. And you, what Blake is showing there is a fallen angel trapped in the cave of his perceptions. Uh, do you see anything else in it? Or is, I mean, what do you see? Well, I think the, the idea of a fallen angel is a very good one because angels are beings of light before they fall and there's something still divine in the form of Newton. But what he's doing is drawing these abstractions, these lines on paper, a two-dimensional geometrical model in a world full of colour and quality and movement and form. And in that sense, I think Blake pictures it very well. I mean, there is something noble about Newton and inspiring. That the whole of the 18th century rationalist movement, the so-called Enlightenment, was based on this idea of Newtonian reason as the ultimate. But mm. what's wrong with it is that it's a limited form of reason, a limited vision of things. And in this picture, you can see there's so much else in the world. And interestingly enough, what Newton left out in his abstract geometries is something that modern science is now beginning to bring back in through chaos and fractals. The new kind of um, mathematical imagery we have has left Newtonian abstractions far behind, even within orthodox science. And you're not surprised that someone like Blake would have reacted against this ferociously, calling it the tree of death and so forth. I mean, it must have struck a, a sort of nightmare chord within him. It would indeed have been a nightmare. There was no spirit, there was no soul. Nature was dead and inanimate. There were no angels or consciousnesses in, uni in the universe. Mm. Animals and plants were machines. And I think it's had a huge impact on our civilization. It's split the sciences from the arts. It's split science from religion. It's fragmented our whole culture. And I suppose Blake, in a sense, was remarkably prescient, wasn't he, in his attacks upon Newtonian science. He, for example, he denied causation. He said every natural effect has a spiritual cause. And he talked about when the organs of perception change, objects seem to change. That seems to strike a very modern chord, doesn't it? In modern science, there's been a, a, a recognition of the obvious in quantum physics that all observations depend on observers. Mm. And so the human mind has come back, in, a, in a, albeit in a very stripped down and, and not very interesting form, but it's had to be admitted at last by scientists mm. that our observations depend on us. Our theories are products of our own minds. His central perception was that the imagination is human existence itself. That it, that it looks into eternity uh, uh, from all its angles. Is that something you would agree with him about? Well, I think the imagination has to be seen of as much larger than our merely limited human minds. And since Blake believed in angels and God, um, th there's a whole realm of consciousness of imagination that goes far beyond the human realm. If I understand Blake correctly, he was talking about a living world, a world permeated by consciousness and spirit full of life and quality. I think the science of the next millennium, certainly the next century, will be much closer to the kind of view that Blake was trying mm. to give.